So I've just started with my blank canvas here and you can just put the text straight onto this, but just to make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to add a pattern fill adjustment layer and I'm just going to have a look what we've got here. So these dots are quite nice, make them a bit bigger. Don't follow exactly what I'm doing here, do it on whatever background you like, but I'm just adding a little bit of interest so it's not just on plain white. Now press T for the type tool or choose it from the toolbar at the side, it's up to you, but I'd always encourage learning the shortcuts where possible. And it's going to come out at whatever default font and size, don't worry about that at the moment. I'm just going to type 3D text. So whatever you want it to say, type it in now because think about what you're doing because this effect isn't easily made a live effect. And what, what that means is the way I'm going to show you today means that once you've applied the effect, if you want to change the text, you'll have to kind of start again, even though it won't take long. Um, there is a more advanced way of keeping the text live and the effect live, but that involves multiple smart objects with loads of sub layers and it is likely going to slow things down a lot. So I'm just going to show you this particular method today, which should be nice and fast for everyone. Okay. So I'm first going to choose a font that I like. So I'll open up my character panel here and I've really got a, a favorite saved and how to save favorite fonts, by the way, is if you go down the list, see this grayed out star next to them. If you just click on one of those stars and you'll see it'll light up next to the font itself. When you then go to this star up here in the main section next to the word find and click on that, that will bring up your favorites list. So anything that you've starred on the other list will always appear in here so you can come back to it quickly. So I quite like this one here, which I've been experimenting with earlier. So I'm going to go with that. Now at this stage, it doesn't matter what color it is because that's all going to be changed in like layer styles later. So we'll just move this to somewhere around there. One bit of advice I do have with the fonts is this effect has more impact and works better with bolder, thicker, chunkier fonts. So try to avoid very thin script like fonts if you can. Um, it just won't have the same effect. So now we've got this text layer here. I'm going to double click in the blank space next to the layer itself. So next to where it says 3D text, I'm going to double click to bring up the layer style dialog. Now all we're going to use this for at the moment is to create a stroke, so an outline. So I would click on stroke and it will come up with whatever default it had. Now for the way I like to do this, I'm going to choose my stroke color and the stroke color will end up being what color the 3D effect will be in. But again, you can always change it later. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick like a mid gray color. Okay. And for the moment, I'm just going to choose uh, red as the color, color overlay for this, just so we can see the stroke a bit clear, a bit more clearly. So with the size of the stroke, you don't want it to be too thick where it to the point where it's like blending into each other like that, but you also don't want it to be really thin somewhere in between something like that. where you have still got mostly got gaps between the text. It doesn't matter if they're going over a bit, as long as it's not all combining together into a mush or something like that. So we'll click OK. Now how the 3D effect is actually generated is by dozens and dozens of duplicates of this layer that are all offset vertically and horizontally by a couple of pixels each time, which sounds complicated and a lot of work. And without a shortcut I'm going to show you, it would be. But in essence, all we're doing is moving duplicates of this layer every time, either up and left on every duplicate, up and right, down and left or down and right, but it's got to stay the same combination of those two. And the best way to do this is the Alt key is going to be our friend. So the Alt key on the keyboard, if you didn't know already, if you hold down the Alt key and you move a layer or you drag a layer in the layers, layers panel, it'll create a duplicate. So already that's a much quicker way of duplicating a layer than dragging it down to the bottom here or even pressing Command or Control J. So knowing we can create duplicates by holding the Alt key, also know that that works if you move the layer or you try to move with the arrow keys. So if we hold Alt and we press down on the down arrow or cursor key, it will create a duplicate. 
and it will move it down slightly. And with the Alt key still held, so we're not doing anything else, tap down, and as you can see, it's just creating a, a duplicate over and over again. I'm gonna delete those for a moment. So our 3D effect is basically created from that, but instead of just pressing the same direction over and over again, we need to alternate between two directions. Also, for this to work, you almost you always need to be on your move tool. So the shortcut for that is V, but you can just leave it on that. As soon as you're on it, you're fine. So I'm gonna go down and left. I'm gonna to commit to a down. No, I tell you what, let's try it, no, up and right. You'll see what happens. So I'm clicking on the text layer, holding down my Alt key, and with the arrow keys, I'm just going to go up, right, and just keep repeating that up, right, up, right. You don't have to do anything else. Just keep repeating those two directions on your keyboard whilst holding the Alt key. It's important that you always hold the Alt key when you're doing this. And as you can see, it's just creating duplicates that are offset by a couple of pixels or a pixel on every nudge. As you can see, it's starting to draw out this almost like graphical 3D extrusion. And if you're fast with your fingers, you can go as quick as you like and you can really fly through it. Watch this. There we go. So now what we've got is this really effective 3D extruded effect. But the downside is now we've got an absolute ton of layers to create that effect as you can see here and the layer at the very top in the layers stack here will obviously be the the very top layer on that i like to keep that separate just so we can change the appearance of the top text so once you've got the 3d effect as deep as you like like this is quite a lot you could you could go less than this of course i'm going to rename this one something different like main text just so we have a separation now at this stage, if you're finding everything really, really slow on your computer because you've got so many duplicates of this layer, then I will show you a way to um, to actually just merge all those together at this stage and just it will relieve your computer of a lot of processing resource and things. It'll make things a lot quicker. So to do that, always keep your now main text layer. Keep that separate because we always need that. So. Click on the first of the duplicates underneath. So in this case, it's copy 120. And scroll all the way down to the bottom to the first of the duplicated layers, which is this one here, 3D text. Hold the shift key, click on that. And what that does then is it copy, it highlights everything between the first and the last thing you clicked on. And now press control if you're on a Mac, um, sorry, if you're on a PC and command if you're on a Mac and E. So control or command and E. And what that'll do is I'll merge all those together into one layer, which then should make things much faster on your computer. So now we've got the 3D effect is that. And what you can't really see is just the main text on the top. So I'm going to highlight these two and press command or control G to put them into a group. Or you could drag them down to the group icon here. And that's our basic 3D effect done. Now there's quite a few things you can do to this to make it a bit more interesting or just to add a bit more of a creative like flair to it. So if you wanted to stop here and you're happy with this effect, then obviously there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It looks really good. But I'm gonna couple more tips to show you here, some interesting ways to improve this. So go into our main text layer now which is still live text, but we can't really change it because then it won't match up with the um, 3D effect underneath, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna go back into the layer styles for this. Now, because the 3D effect has been created by dozens of duplicates of basically the outline stroke of the main text, it's all the same color, which a lot of the time is exactly how this effect is presented. But if you wanted to make a different stroke color on the top, very top layer, and obviously you can now come and edit the stroke and you can change it to maybe you can make it a little bit lighter so it's still gray or whatever color you chose but just like a little bit of a lighter version so it separates it from the rest of the 3d or a little bit darker like that or you can change the color completely but i'm actually going to just um i'm just going to take it back down to the to the original color 
and just have it all that blend in. I think that looks quite nice. But again, this is just where you can really go crazy and experiment with all these different things. But I don't really like the red text personally. I don't like the solid text for this. I mean, it looks really good in isolation, but I wanted to go for something a little bit different. So I'm gonna click on gradient overlay. I'm gonna uncheck color overlay and go to gradient overlay. And black and white's a bit boring, so I'm gonna go and edit the gradient here. And on the, the left hand side here where it's black, I'm gonna edit that color by clicking down here. And I wanna do a nice orange to yellow gradient, like a sunset kind of gradient. So I'll choose a nice rich orange color. Something like that's quite nice. Click OK. Then I'm gonna go all the way to the right hand side, click on the white square, and then go and click on the white box below to choose a new color. I'm gonna pick a nice yellow. A nice bright yellow, oh, I really like that, yeah. I'm gonna click OK, and then OK again. So now we've got this nice gradient. I mean, this is all to taste, but I just really like this kind of soft gradients between two similar colors. And this is a bonus trick I want to show you now. And I only actually discovered this when I was playing around um, for this tutorial. And it's how to use the bevel and emboss tool to create a completely different kind of effect than it was designed for. So if you click on bevel and emboss, and what I'm going to do here is just try to zoom in on this a little bit so you can see what's going on. At a default, you can see it's created a really kind of bad looking embossed effect but we're going to use this one completely different. So make sure it's set to inner bevel, which it already is. Technique smooth, so these can stay the same. The first thing I'm going to do is just quickly come down to this bottom section here where it says angle, contour, and then you've got a highlight color, a shadow color for the um, bevel effect. So what I'll do, I'm just going to drag the shadow color down, not completely away, but just quite low. I'm going to drag the highlight up. As you can see now, it's just made the effect a lot more subtle in the shadows. So we haven't got these dark shadows. I'm going to change the contour to one of these in the middle. So click on the little arrow next to the word contour. Don't click on the actual thing itself, otherwise it'll bring up a graph and you don't want to do that at the moment. So click the little arrow. And I'm going to choose this one with a little two, the two point sharp hills, but either that or the one to the side or the one to the side, just one of these really spiky ones. Okay. And for this effect to work, we need to now go to the angle. So we're kind of working from the bottom up on this. Go to the angle box here, click on it, and drag, drag it as further outside as it can go. So right up to the edge of the angle box. Because if you, if you bring it down, it starts to go all dull and flat. So stretch it to the very edge of the circle and just leave it at that for the moment. And now here's where we turn this into a completely different effect. So we're gonna to go to the depth and the size and we're gonna start dragging these up. So we drag depth up and we're gonna drag size up. And when we start to drag size up, if you see what happens, it takes this 3D like bevel away and it starts to just kind of almost just distort it and make the highlights and the shadows just almost go to mush. Now if you look what happens now, it's it's made it distorting so much that it's almost given it like a, a shiny, glossy, plastic or metallic kind of a look. And we can play with the um, depth just to bring different amounts. And now once you got to this stage, it's really cool because you can play around with the size, the depth, the angle, but always keep it right to the outside. Because again, if I drag it in, it goes all dull right to the outside, but you can rotate it round and you can get the pattern to shift and change wherever you like. You can play with the contour. So we'll open up the contour again, pick one of the other spiky ones. You can see we get a stronger effect with that one. We get an even stronger effect with that one. Um, and that, so this is great now and you can just play around and obviously you can change the colors, but I'm gonna click okay, cause I really like that. So that was just like an extra little bonus tip on how you can get this kind of shiny glossy plastic look or metallic look or whatever onto your text regardless of whether you're using it for this tutorial or not. I hope you found this useful because I think this is a really good effect and once you know how to do it quickly it really is a very simple job to take any text and just apply this kind of graphic design led 3D effect to it. So I'd appreciate you clicking the like if you enjoyed the video 
a comment or a subscribe will be hugely appreciated as well because it really helps the channel to keep growing and uh, motivates me to put out new videos every week. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.